let's go back to Safari and <clears throat> Another quality, uh, or change the quality of the sound is another category that we can use. This is one that uh, we will use quite a bit. If you needed to uh, boost up the bass range, uh, this is a sort of a way, a, a smooth way of doing just that one particular range. It may be more useful for us to take a look at equalization. Equalization is something that you will be using quite a bit in most of your sound files to, to sort of tweak uh, the, the tone, basically the timbre, which we can have some manipulation. If you click on that, then you'll see uh, an explanation of how this is going to work. And I'll, if you have any questions of these, uh, you can go through uh, the tutorials. But let's go back over to our sound file. And let's do a select all. And if we go into equalization, <coughs> you see it's there under effects. So now you see an equalizer. There are some uh, presets that we can pull up here. We can manually uh, move the, the whole thing up just with our mouse. If you use the uh, option, you can then specify certain points where you want to amplify or to attenuate. So it's the equalizer is set up on 0 dB, which means it's a flat, what's called a flat signal. So once I have uh, that, I can move them, uh, move them around these these little dot points. So option or alternate or alternate click, you can uh, then specify change points in that. So each time you get a change point, then I just move my mouse around and I can move those anywhere I want. So you can amplify or attenuate according to the frequency spectrum. So remember we're getting minus 3B, which is lowering the, the amplitude or raising the amplitude. Generally when you're doing equalization, uh, this 12 dB, you will see it's kind of uh, bold. Uh, that's there because often you're not going to be going beyond that. If you do have any kind of amplification or attenuation beyond uh, 12 dB away from the flat signal, it will often create a little bit of distortion or alteration to the noise that will be undesirable. So uh, you can do that, but generally under, under most circumstances you'll be staying within this 12 plus or minus 12 dB range in your equalization. And here you can see from, <clears throat> if I'm moving this up, I'm going to be amplifying the uh, frequencies that are around 20 Hertz. If you, like my voice speaking, my voice speaking is not down in this range, so probably that will not change audibly anything that's going on because there's nothing really happening in, in the frequency range down there. But as I get up closer to 100 to 200 range, uh, that's probably where my voice is going to be coming in, and this will have a, a dramatic impact upon the flat signal. And then remember, my voice will have spectrum, which, which will probably go all the way up to 20,000 hertz. So you'll see the spectrum range goes to uh, 10,000 hertz and then uh, 10,000 up to around 20,000 here. So the upper end, uh, if my voice is not hearing too much there, then we, then we won't hear that. Uh, we can have a filter. We want to filter out certain ones that you can specify uh, the length of that filter. Uh, we can also change this to, uh, to really in some ways this is a parametric equalizer setting where we can set, set certain points we can have the uh, those center frequencies. We can have a range around that, where we have uh, some kind of uh, equalization change. We, we can change the whole setting also to give us what's called a graphic equalizer, which some people uh, prefer the graphic. What the graphic does is allow it, it, it uh, go ahead and slices up the spectrum into these multiple slices. And so you'll see here around 400 hertz, it automatically gives you a 400 slice, and then you you can't in the graphic equalizer you don't have control over the uh, the width around that so it has a kind of a preset width that you can uh, set up on that <coughs> uh, but we can do go up here and obviously change that using the parametric settings but sometimes the graphic is an easier way to quickly find specific kind of frequencies if you're trying to to have an equalization around a particular frequency that's, that's very exact sometimes the graphic gives you that so this is actually a very good uh, equalizer, equalizer because it gives you both these sort of parametric controls, but it also gives you the graphic just by switching back and forth on that. Down here, there are some presets. And these presets are kind of a simulation of historical kinds of equalization. If we go back to AM radio, for example, uh, the, AM, the AM radio uh, historically would have a very narrow spectrum uh, that it could reproduce given the fact uh, the way the amplitude modulation system worked and also the kind of speakers that you would find on a small AM radio. So if we were to pull that up, you would see here a typical AM radio, the old AM radio uh, spectrum 
would give you very severe reductions. Almost no sound would be coming up to 100 hertz. And then we would slowly start to get some uh, frequencies to be heard around. And then up to flat was from 400 up to around 1,000 hertz. And then a very sharp roll off above that. So if we were to preview the, the, by recording of that in an AM radio sound, this is what it would sound like. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, So if eight. I were to, to record that, then testing, play that. Testing, one, two, three, four. Now this is not so dramatic because my voice, if we, if we go back to that equalizer, my voice was pretty much mostly within the range of the AM radio. And that's why AM radio was pretty good at just uh, uh, representing speech. Because speech, you're not having that much distortion going on. But if you, you would never have a full musical spectrum, which would be a much wider one that would be represented on the AM. Now, if I did process this, if I want to back up from that, then all I have to do is go up to my undo and then it will take me backwards and you'll see now we're back to uh, the sound before it was processed to that effect processing. So let's go back over to the manual. <clears throat> so that was equalization, which is, a, which is an important one to look at. Uh, some more dramatic ones, which may be interesting for you, would be like the Paul stretch. What this does is give you a time stretch uh, of a very uh, long time stretch. And you may find some applications for that, but we'll, I'm going to do time stretch a little bit later. But this is one you might want to play around with. Uh, tremolo is sometimes useful. Remember we talked about uh, amplitude modulation. The tremolo is a, uh, a slow alteration of amplitude, usually controlled by either a sine wave or a triangle wave. So you would get a, a, a continuous uh, loudness and softness of the sound and that would be set up as a kind of a simple amplitude modulation uh, into our VCA uh, from our control oscillator which would be a sine wave or, or a triangle waveform. So if you look at the setting here and you can specify the waveform in the, the type of tremolo you want to create. So now that's another one interesting to play with. Vocoder we will come back to a little bit later. Uh, this is a, a really useful one which is another type of modulation where we take the the audio signal and uh, take another a carrier wave, usually white noise, and and modify that with the uh, the, the channel coming through it. So vocoder have been used in, in popular music and all sorts of settings for a long time, and uh, it's a very useful kind of effect processing, which we'll come back to a little bit later. And the and the wah wah. So if you are uh, like the 1970s, where you would have, have most guitars will run through a wah wah pedal, uh, that that has a certain kind of effect, and you have a sort of a wah wah effect you can do here. So the changing the quality of the sound, there are quite a few good ones that most of these you will be using at some point in either your sound processing or your sound design. Another a useful one is sometimes you have audio that you need to clean up, uh, such or fix. If you do have some clipping, there is a clip fix, which will try to uh, give you a threshold that you can, it'll help you get rid of some of the clipping on that. It, it doesn't always work for everything. Uh, if you have just one short click or a pop, then your repair system can, can uh, fix that one as well. And also the click removal. Uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, here again, gives you a threshold for that, but it will look for any kind of pops or clicks that, under, that are above that threshold and then reduce those as well, or any kind of, of spikes. So some of these uh, repairs will not work on everything, but they, they are uh, useful if you do have some sounds you want to try to clean up. And then, of course, a notch filter, which we talked about, is also very useful, which if you have a spectrum where sound is uh, coming in that you don't want, you can create a notch and filter that particular spectrum out uh, by setting a center frequency on the notch and then try to reduce the amplitude around that particular uh, frequency range. So repairing damaged audio is an important part of some of the effects uh, that you will be using on this. Now going on down, uh, this is also a very useful uh, set of parameters here, which is changing the pitch, speed, tempo. Uh, there's a sliding time scale or pitch scale, but a slightly different one than these. And we also mentioned the extreme pulse stretch. And then if we want to truncate silences, uh, which will we'll sort of find and eliminate the audible silences in that. So let's take a look at the change pitch function. 
and you'll see here there's we can uh, specify this from one key up to another key if we want to change from a particular frequency to another frequency we can also uh, do that in uh, half steps we can just say go up two half steps which from F to G uh, would be from two half steps on equal tempered or we can do up or down uh, we can also specify the particular frequency uh, number so if we were to look at F which would be 531 uh, Hertz approximately going to G would be up to 596 so if you could actu actually put in the specific frequency number for that or we could also do a percentage change which would which would be another way of looking at it. This slide fader, regardless, will give you all of those and we, need, we can move the slide fader. And we do have the pre preview command on that as well. So let's go back over to Audacity. And let's just highlight maybe uh, this three. So if I just take the that reading of three and go up to our effects processing and we'll go down to change pitch and we will see the commands we just looked at so we can move this and these are just uh, kind of default points so B flat up to B flat right now we have nothing being changed so if I take my slide fader and move up you can see I can now slowly move the percentage or the frequency change up and we'll see how that translates into half steps and that will translate up here into approximate as we move so if I want to go back and just go maybe do it manually here and set this on two half steps now listen to it three three and you can hear the difference my pitch has gone up I'm going to do a command Z to undo that three three now you can hear the difference so let's go back to effects change speed again and let's do something more dram dramatic let's go down maybe even almost uh, more than a little more than five steps so this would be coming from a B flat down to a, to an F of almost a perfect fourth there so as we can preview that three three so now you can hear the lower sound um, if we do something much higher we can maybe going up from B flat to an E three starts to sound more like a chipmunk kind of voice or extreme high Three. So these previews allow you to sort of check it out before you, before you do that. So the slide fader is going to give you the, the incremental variable, but you can do it specifically by clicking on these and putting in whatever frequency or percentage change or semitones you want. So the change pitch is a very useful uh, command if you need to uh, alter the voice in, in any way. Uh, one other effect that is sort of interesting on this that you may not use always, I'm going to do a select all in the whole file is coming down to do a reverse uh, the reverse would be just taking the file and listening to it backwards this was a technique that was used in uh, early music concrete uh, compositions of the 1940s and 50s coming out of uh, Paris and, and they would take uh, real to real tapes and run them backwards and to hear sounds in, in the reverse so if I reverse that you will see it's the same wave file but now we will hear the sounds going backwards so sometimes you can get some very interesting sounds uh, when you just reverse them maybe not all of them so let me undo that function again all right let's continue on and let me go back to our my number three again three okay and highlight that and let's go up now to change speed you can uh, <clears throat> change the speed uh, this will affect both the tempo and the pitch on this particular command um, so if I slow it down, it will also uh, get slower and longer. Three. Three. So if I go up higher, oh. it went higher, but it also went much faster. So this, this command will change more like you did with the reel-to-reel -reel tapes. And that's why they have a kind of a standard vinyl uh, 33 if you want to change from a 33 and a third to a 45 speed uh, that would be the particular setting it's a 35 percent change um, so these are d designed to kind of change to convert from different kind of vinyl formats but uh, this change speed is also a very useful command three okay we're back to the original uh, let's go to change tempo <coughs> same thing this would be changing the tempo without changing the pitch so I could do them separately so if I wanted to make this uh, three so 
So you can see the pitch will not change, but it still sounds on the same pitch of my voice, but now it's much slower. There's a certain percentage before you get some breakup in the sound that you'd have to... Three. Yeah, so if, if we don't go too dramatic, it, the, the, you don't, it, uh, it doesn't distort the sound, or we, or we get some kind of fragmentation of the sound. Three. I can go faster or slower. And you can put in beats per minute or length on that as well. The next effect is, let's take a look at the add reverberation or echo. We, this will be used probably almost every single time you do any sound design or editing of sound. Um, reverberation, as we talked about, is the, the, the natural inclination of sound that is when you're inside a room, there is some kind of reflected sound. The sound uh, will be heard directly, but also there will be delayed vibrations coming off the walls, through the ceiling, so forth. We, we, we tend to call that reverberation. You can also do a more extreme version of that, which is an echo if you get a parallel walls or something in a house where you don't have a decaying uh, reflected sound, but you have something of high energy <laughs> that goes back with a certain delay. So we have, under this area, we have delay, echo, and g-verb, which is a type of reverb plugin. Uh, let's, let's take a look at all three of these, actually. So the delay is one where you can change the amount of time of the delay, but you can also, as each reoccurrence of the delay, rearticulation of the sound, we can change the pitch or the tempo of that as well, and then how many different uh, times it rearticulates or the number of echoes involved in that. So let's go back over to Audacity, and let me just take these three, two, three, four, two. All right, so from that we will go up to First of all, echo. Echo is, is the more simpler one. All it does is you put in a delay sound, and let's say if I do this at a half second. Um, two, 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 three, three, four, 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 four. So you can you can tell that it just is a sort of a standard uh, delay time, which, which we can set up the echo. The delay effect, which is here, is a little bit more. Uh, robust because you can change the uh, the pitch uh, of, of the uh, and as well as the delay time, um, the number of echoes, but you also have the pitch change as you can specify here. So if I want this to be decreasing in pitch, and we can put the um, the how much the level is, how loud each delay will be, the time between each delay, and then the number of echoes for each one. So when we process that. Then listen to what this creates. Two, two, three, three, four, 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 four. So you can hear that each time it will change pitch as it goes down, but also each time it's getting slower and longer on, on the delays. So this is a much more interesting kind of uh, uh, effect change. Let me undo that with uh, Apple Z or Command Z. All right, so delay is, is a useful one, or echo, uh, which is a more simpler version of that. If we then go to the uh, G-verb, which is one that comes with it, we can explore the idea of reverberation. I uh, have several different commands here. We can change the room size, the reverb time, uh, the dry signal level. When we say uh, dry versus wet, uh, usually on, when you hear sound coming in a room, as I said before, you're hearing the sound directly from the sound source which would be the dry signal, but part of that is then you then hear the reflected sound uh, being mixed coming in delayed after that. So what is most natural to our ears is to hear both the dry signal coming first to our ears and then the reverberated or the reflected sound coming at some interval delay following that. The next category of, of effects is uh, remove vocals. Uh, this one I'll have to wait. A vocal remover is a useful uh, tool, but it actually uh, has to be using a stereo audio file, and what it looks for is the uh, center pan vocals. But generally, when you have a, uh, a number of uh, tracks, your instruments are going to be panned somewhat to the left or the right, so your vocals often are center. So once we have a stereo center pan vocal track, we can then uh, try the vocal remover and, and remove that track. But uh, in our current version, uh, we won't be able to use that, so we'll come back to that a little bit later. Already under the generate, are the next three categories where we can generate the tone, uh, different kind of sine waves, sawtooths, so forth, which we've demonstrated already. Uh, we can also do a noise generator, either white, pink, or brown. 
And remember, the white noise is uh, where you have an even uh, frequency spread of amplitude, uh, and the pink is per octave, <coughs> so it ends up being a little bit darker sounding, and then the brown is even, even darker sounding. <coughs> uh, so we already demonstrated some of that. The click track is also an important uh, tr uh, generator instrument that we would be using probably every single time. Let's take a look at some of the analysis uh, so we can analyze the amplitude or really for information trying to figure out what's going on. If we need to find if there's clipping or if we want to look at the spectrum and so forth, these are, are somewhat useful tools. So let's go back over to our WAV file in Audacity. So if we take a look at these two, same, three, four, again, and we go to an Analyze. If I go to Splot uh, plot Spectrum, we can see here what this tells us is looking at the audio files we're looking, uh, we, we just highlighted, where the fundamental is. You can see the fundamental would be the loudest uh, frequency, and it's a little under a thousand hertz. And these are the uh, spectrum going up, where we can put our, actually it's around 186 hertz, uh, which would be where the lowest spectrum is in this area. And then we can see where the peaks are, which are the essentially the overtones that we're hearing in the sound. So we have one peak uh, around 3400, and then the next peak is going to be around 5770. So this is a good way of analyzing to find out what kind of content you have in each of the uh, waveforms. So if I pick another one, for example, if we do just this short amount here, Let's listen to that. Which has sort of a constant frequency. This is where I was starting to sing some of the pitches. So if we do a spectrum look at that one, we see a clear fundamental and then a very even sort of a spectrum across about the same level because it's a constant frequency. Um, so this is a good useful sort of understanding what's happening inside the spectrum of each voice if you're trying to do uh, sort of compare timbres and so forth. We can also look for clipping. You'll see here, if I just take that same element and I look for clipping, it'll generate a second file here. There was no clipping in this file. All right, so let me do this. I'm gonna take this whole sound here. Five. And I'm going to go back up here and amplify that, and which is just going to raise the volume of that. So right now, but you also have to force it to allow clipping because generally this will not go, not allow you to amplify more than in clipping range. So if I allow clipping, I can then push this up. Let's do something around here and then do OK. And you see here the whole file is clipped. It has gone beyond that. So now if I go back to my analysis and find clipping and generate that, you see here there are probably hundreds of thousands of points where the waveform was clipped. Each time it goes into a clipping with a waveform, it generates another clipping direction here. So this one would be probably too complicated to try to correct because there are too many points. But this fine clipping is a very useful tool just to when you get through running something. If you're not sure, if you've got a lot of sounds that seem to be getting close to zero dB, if you run this program to analyze, it'll tell you where there's clipping on that. So that uh, is sometimes very helpful. Let me just back up through here and get that back to zero. So let me go back over to here. Uh, that was under uh, fine clipping and plot spectrum and so forth. These next ones are just labeling if you want to label the silences or the sounds or if you want to find particular beats in that. The beat finder is sort of useful if you're dealing with uh, beat oriented music that you're trying to find sort of where there is pulse through that. I encourage you to read all about uh, this through here. But if we go back over and if I just do a select all, and then uh, if I try to find running the beat finder here, for example, and it will then, you can have a threshold or a certain sound level that it goes above, and then it'll start to find beats above that. And you'll see here that it does identify pretty much where the beats are. This threshold was maybe too low because I was getting some internal uh, articulations of the voice that were creating other kind of sub beats there. But pretty much on the top level, we're getting the beats starting at the same point. So this is a simple example. If we had something that had more clear beats in it, we would we would be able to identify the beats and then start to identify the length between them and so forth. So another very useful uh, effects processing for analysis. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.